Hi guys and welcome back to Chengi's World. It is always wonderful when I get a minute to just sit with you guys and talk to you because there's so much that I want to share with you. Okie dokie. So today's video is called The Work. Um, <laughs> I know that this is really one of those videos that um, we sort of kind of think, okay, can you just give me a text message or something to send him because he hasn't spoken to me for a while. And um, I was looking through some of my videos and I was sort of, I, I do that now and again, I just go through some of my videos so that I can remember what I've said, uh, so that I'm not being repetitive. And I, I, I hear myself say, you've got to do the work quite a lot in my videos. And I was thinking, do they know what the work is? You know, I'm just assuming that we know what the work is. <laughs> so I'm going to do this video real quick to let you just give you an insight into what I mean called the work. Now, for those of you guys, there's a video I have on this channel that I worked on for ages. There's some videos that are, they're just instinctive. They come out of my, my nature. I just know what I want to talk about. Roll the camera. Okay. And I'm good to go. Um, and there's some that I that I really invest a lot of time into, energy into, prayer into. And it's really funny because those are the videos that I think, whoa, they're going to have like loads of views because they're so important to me or I've invested that much time. And some of those videos get like, whatever, hardly any views. And that's absolutely fine. Except that I did one called The Dating Sabbatical and I'm always musing every time I look at it because it still has the lowest views. Because nobody really wants to know about that. Nobody really wants to go on any kind of sabbatical. We just want to find our man. We just want to find our man yesterday. <laughs> or get the guy that's really not interested to be interested. We're on a fix me now scenario. So obviously it's the videos that are what to text. And you know if he's playing you. Ugly guys versus good looking guys. Those are great ones. Because we just want to work out today's solution. And I remember about two, three years ago when I was still very much kind of like a dating virgin, I used to buy all of these programs and spend so much money because somebody would promise me that if I did this program for 40 pounds, I would finally meet the man of my dreams and keep him. <laughs> So I made the dating industry a heck of a lot of money um, because they, they had a way of, of feeding into that need for instant gratification. And I, I spent a lot of money in a lot of programs. I don't regret it, it was part of my education and, and you guys get to benefit from some of that education. But there's one thing I learned in that process after spending all of that money. <laughs> and it was always around the 40 pound mark, I, I, you know, whatever. After spending all of that money on all of these little tricks and tricks that's gonna just get him to love me and be devoted and da, 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 I found one program and it was supposed, it was like a 20 something week program. And I was so, I was a junkie. Give me, give me something now because I'm dating Johnny uh, and I want him to take me out on a hundredth, whatever. I, I wanted a fix up situation. So I remember paying the money, being so annoyed because normally you can download the whole thing and just work through the bits that you think and pick out the bits that you, but this program was making me have to do it week by week. So I was like, okay. I'm not feeling this, so I send them, a, a, you know, a, a message, can I have my money back, please? And I was so incensed, but I wanted the results, but I understood, I didn't understand then what I understand now, that the woman who had designed this program truly wanted change for me. She really wanted the people that did this program to truly experience change. And in order for that to happen, she had to start from scratch you know some of the stuff was you know tell yourself that you're beautiful and then have a nap and i was like are you for real no i ain't telling my can you just tell me what text to send him <laughs> okay and i realized that as i have started being a, a dating coach and a life coach um to so many people i realized how we're lacking so deeply at the fundamentals i get messages and letters from you guys all the time and what you guys are asking me about are things that are so foundational. Um, things that if you had those, if, if the foundations were right, you know, there's a scripture that says, you know, if the foundations of the heart be destroyed, what can the righteous man do? You know, if, if the foundations of your heart are in shattered and, and in pieces, what can you do? Even if you're a good woman and you, but if you, your foundations are off, then 
anything that you do you can build whatever you want but if you're building it on shifting sand it's never going to last it's not going to last the seasons and the things that happen to relationships naturally you will crumble at the smallest of things because you're not built up so this is what this program was supposed to do for me and so this is what i try and do with you guys and when i do those videos nobody wants to watch those nobody wants to watch pain nobody wants to watch dating sabbatical nobody wants to watch um the weight. Nobody wants to watch those videos because they just mean I have to work on my foundations. And right now, if I get a man, that will fix my foundations, baby. Now, I hate to break it to you. I hate to break it to you. But unless you go and work on those foundations, nothing you build will ever work. You can buy every program. You can go and buy every... I have bought so many. You can go to dating coaches who are have got a million followers, follow their little tips and tricks here and there. But I'm telling you, baby girl, if you have got dodgy foundations, you're not going anywhere. You're just prolonging your singleness and extending your pain and attracting more pain and damaging yourself. Because when we do the wrong things, meet the wrong guys and allow that to continue in our lives, there is a price to pay. So when I'm talking about the work, what I'm really referring to is the work on yourself. It's about asking yourself the question. Before you send me an email saying he's playing up, he hasn't called me back in a thousand years, I only date guys that are dodgy, da, 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 da. Before that happens, and don't I'm not trivializing any of your pain, guys, but I, 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 I want to just drive something home. Before that happens, before you go to your computer or to your phone and send me a message on Instagram and Facebook and, and all my social media, I love hearing from you guys, I really do. But before you do that, ask yourself the question, what is it that allows me to fall for a man that treats me this badly? You see, we never ask ourselves that question. What is it? If Because let me tell you something. If you have to go to your computer and type out a situation, there's something wrong with that situation, okay? And... You need to really ask yourself, what is it about me that tolerates this? What is it about me? Because you know what? The work is not on him. Everybody wants me to give you a trick on him. The work is on you. I learned that the hard way. And so I had to stop. Some of us just need to stop. Please go and watch Dating Sabbatical. Please go and watch Pain. Because we need to stop and do the work. Ask the questions. Where am I broken? What is it about me? What pain am I trying to avoid? What makes, how am I feeling? You know, before I engage in, a, in any kind of conversation with any kind of man, I always check myself. I do the work. The work is when you open yourself up and look at yourself as if from the outside in. But you are the only person who can see what's going on on the inside of you. And start and ask yourself. Be conscious. Be aware. Be present in yourself. And I say to myself, I won't date desperate. I won't date hurt. I won't date bored. I won't date if I'm in a certain kind of frame of mind. I won't entertain any male attention. Why? Because all of those positions are dangerous and because I've dated in those positions before and nothing has come of it. So what I do is ask myself, am I entertaining this person because I'm bored, because I'm feeling lonely, because I'm feeling desperate, because I'm feeling something other than content and grateful? Because 90% of the time, girls, we are dating out of a brokenness. We are acting out of a brokenness. We're entertaining a guy that we would probably slap our friend for even entertaining. We are doing it because there's something on the inside of us. There's a feeling, there's a mood. So the work is not a work you do today and then tomorrow you're free from it. You know, oh, today I did the work. So if I do the work for a week, then you will always do the work. Even when you are married, you have to do the work. What is it about what he said or did right there that just got me into this frenzy? Like, let me examine myself. What is it about me? What button did he press? What soreness is on the inside of me that I need to work on? Because it's always about you. Always, always, always about you. It's always about what you will tolerate. It's always what whatever we tolerate persists in our lives. If we tolerate men who don't treat us with love and affection, who don't chase us, who don't who don't do the things that we deserve, 
then it's about me. What is it about me that is okay being the last to be considered and the first to be sacrificed? What is it about me that is all about the jerks? What is it about me that a man can act a certain kind of way and I'm good with that? That's the work. That's working on your self-esteem. That's working on your mindset. That's working on your spirit. That's working on you. So when I say do the work, I mean ask yourself, question yourself. What is it about me? Take the situation, internalize that situation, and then begin to break it down one after the other. What is it about me? What is it in my history? What did I see growing up? What did my mom accept? Is it because my mom accepted my dad treating her a certain kind of way? Look through your history about the women in my family. How were they treated? What are their relationships like? What is the only example of relationship I've had? What is it about me, about my life, my upbringing? What is it about me and my, and my walk with God and my... And my, and my relationship with myself. What is it about me? Do I see this behavior manifesting itself in more than just my dating life? Is it manifesting in other places? What, you know, you've got to take time out every single day. Take time out for you and do the work. And what begins to happen is at first it's difficult. At first it's boring. At first you just what a man you don't want to do the work but eventually you start to do it on the trot i do it on the trot i do the work on the trot yeah what am i feeling okay that's not the right place that i need so there it is guys there it is it's really about taking the time out to do the work on yourself and it's not easy but it's so necessary for you guys for all of us to find ourselves and not be a prisoner to 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 life, be in the driver's seat in your life and to not need to reach out to somebody and just, we all need to reach out. I, I people that I reach out to, but the, the, the problem is whether you reach out in the hope that somebody else is going to give you the, shall I call him then? You know, I have conversations with you guys where you're like, so should I get his, take, pick up his, well, if you understood what I just said to you, if you did the work that I'm asking you to do, you wouldn't ask me that question. You wouldn't ask me whether or not you should pick up the phone when he calls you. You should know that answer to that question. Because actually, it's easier for it to be Chengi said not to answer. And then when you're feeling really, really lonely and the work hasn't been done, because those things that are on the inside of us, they speak really loud. They speak louder than common sense. They speak louder than, than, than anyone you will ever meet that is loud. The, the voice of insecurity, the voice of self, low self-worth, the voice of loneliness, the voice of, of peer pressure, the voice of other people can be so loud that our logical mind can be shut down, that our hearts can be shut down. We can be so blinded. That's why we need to control the voices that's why we need to address the voices we need to give them an answer and they will never go away but we can never truly silence them but to think that by meeting somebody and adding another human being to that problem is going to fix it no honey when you meet that man and you have those voices speaking it's going to put a microphone to those voices okay it's going to put a microphone to those voices we think that we can fix something going on internally by something external it doesn't work that way the internal work takes internal work if you've got a problem with something it's happening inside of you you've got to fix that because if you take something from the outside in someone is going to break and if you don't break yourself you're going to break another human being and that's not what we're about so guys i really hope hope you get the spirit of what I'm trying to transmit to you guys today through this video and I'll see you soon so I will see you guys on Instagram Facebook and Twitter Chengi's world baby Twitter is Chengi pot at the moment and I am looking forward to seeing you guys um take care of yourselves and I'll see you soon bye bye